Hello all you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. This is a Begode T4 range test. As you can see here, it is at 100%. That may not be entirely accurate. I did try to record the screen there before I took off. A uh, few users recommended using the Nicola Plus in EUC World. That did not work at all. The speed was way off, the voltage started dropping in EUC World, it just was not accurate. So you'll see here in a second I switch over to the Bagoda app. As you guys know, I am a 220 pound rider. I did charge this wheel, take it off the charger when it was done, let it sit for a couple of hours, put it back on the charger just to make sure it was at complete full charge. Here's the Bagoda app, what I switched to. It does do increments of 10%, which is a little unfortunate, but I did my best to get this range test done for you guys. So 220 pound rider, I upped the PSI on the tire to about 40, 42 PSI. And this was, you know, the morning started off about 66 degrees and it got up to about 70, 74. All of this is paved flat trails. I tried my best to do exactly 20 miles an hour, except for obviously anything like this, you know, people, street crossings, anything like that. I caught myself doing 22 and 24 a couple of times, but for very short distances. So this would be a very good 20 mile an hour accurate range test for a rider, roughly my weight. I am still very, very pleased with this wheel. I do very much like riding it. The tire itself has performed very well on on and off road. However, you know, I'm not used to a street tire or a street style tire. And I did notice filling this thing up to 40 PSI, it definitely became a little less stable. It is very, very rounded profile, which makes it very nimble, very agile, very quick to maneuver. However, at the higher PSIs, you know, in some of my videos you guys will see me swaying back and forth. It was very difficult to try to do that on this tire. It took me probably two to three miles to get used to that pressure in this tire. But not to say, you know, others may be used to this or it's easier for them. I just don't really prefer a tire like this. But for this wheel, I find it is a perfect tire. You know, I haven't ridden anything wet yet. Obviously no snow yet. But so far, it has done great for everything I've thrown at it. Comparing this wheel to other wheels as far as doing my range tests, most of you know I do not ride long ranges. I will do a lot of trips in a day or a weekend, but not, you know, 40, 50 miles at a go. So comfort is obviously a big deal here, and a lot of users, especially new ones, do complain about foot fatigue or foot pain or just discomfort over time. And riding something like the S18, it's a very comfortable wheel. The small pedals make for foot fatigue very quickly. The RS19, that's a kind of chunky small wheel and where the width is placed and since the pedals kind of angle up and out, it gives you an odd stance and I noticed range testing that wheel that the sides of my knees where the kind of bow is when you're standing over that wheel was very uncomfortable, like pain after I was done riding that wheel a couple of times for a long range. You know, obviously my body's getting used to riding these wheels and longer ranges, but the S22 with its width actually didn't impact me much. The Master, same thing. And this wheel, same thing. The Hero's very, very narrow if you guys don't know, so I'm not even going to include that for the widths. But I think it's a matter of how the pedals are placed. You can see I'm at the Chehalis Western Trail. There's so many miles in this trail and there's link trails to it so you could literally ride them indefinitely. This is how far I've gone so far. 14 miles. I was at 60%. Again, if you let the wheel sit for a second, it'll go up 10% from where it's at, which, yeah, kind of unfortunate. 
But again, I was trying my best to give you guys the stats in this video with, you know, my current speed, the distance I've gone, what the voltage or I guess battery percent says in the Goat app because there's no voltage still. But again, this wheel is extremely comfortable. You know, it's, I was hesitant with the small pedals because my big feet, but the way that the wheel is built and the way that you stand on it, it was surprisingly comfortable. I did this entire range test and the few times I stopped was because I went to lunch or I went to the store to grab some stuff through my backpack. But it wasn't that I was stopping because of foot fatigue or foot pain, which was a very nice feeling because some other wheels, you know, I'd stop numerous times or I changed the pedal angle forward or backwards to try to compensate for that, give the feet a little bit of a break. So throughout this video, I not only tried to record the display on the T4, but my phone as well and did screen recordings of the phone. The S22 video, there wasn't a lot of backlash or comments on it, you know, believing or disbelieving the range I got. But the master videos was that all heck broke loose on those. So with this one, there isn't as much writing footage, but there's mixed in with my current screen, the phone, the app, the display on the unicycle. So you guys could fully grasp and see you know, that I started this at 9.30 in the morning, and I rode it all the way through, and you could follow. You know, I, I wanted you guys to be able to see at what percent I got how many miles and how many miles I could ride at each percent, which, again, you know, at 100%, as soon as the wheel starts moving, it drops to 90% in the Bogota app. The EUC world, I'm still waiting for it to show the T4, because at least that app gives you the voltages. It's a lot more accurate in my opinion. It just helps you better understand, you know, how much range you may or may not have left in the wheel. This wheel was a very nice ride for the range test. Some of the other wheels when I did the range test, I did do some seated riding and standing riding. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about seated riding for this. You can see here, it's slowed down a little bit, try to get that for you. Uh, I stood this entire thing, just FYI. So there was no sit and riding, it was standing the entire time. So from 100% down to 60%, I got 20 miles or so. And at that point, I was thinking, God, this wheel's really not going to make it as far as I hoped it would. However, you still have to take into consideration that the app's dropping by 10% as soon as it's in movement, and it's not perfectly accurate. So, based off of those two things, I just wanted to just keep riding it. You can see here, I'm at 29 miles, and I had 30%. If I stopped it, it would go up to 40%. So I always knew I had that 10% buffer, give or take, while I was riding, if you look at the screen there, which you'll see, you know, a few times here, there's the my mile per hour, and just below that, there's the KM with a number next to it and a little gauge. I figured out what that was once I actually started writing. At the very beginning, it said something like 67, and then it slowly started dropping over time with the percentages and my speed. So that, I believe, you can see it here, it says 24 KM was, you know, I'm at 30% battery and 30 miles. It's not good if you look at it compared to a lot of other wheels, but stay tuned. We're going far, I believe it. Um, that 24 km sitting there is actually the quote unquote max speed you should be going with the amount of percent battery left. So it's basically your safety margin constantly telling you there, hey, you know, with this battery, do not be going over 21 kilometers an hour. I know a gentleman recently updated his wheel, was out doing a range test, and at like 20 miles an hour, the wheel just dropped him. So after seeing that post, the night before I did this range test, I was fully, we're at 33 miles, 30% here, dropped down to 20. But again, if I stopped the wheel, it'd go back up to 30%. I was fully embracing the fact that 
it could give out on me, and then I'm going to shoulder in and just take it if the wheel does it. I see so much concern with people asking, especially newer riders or people who want to join the community and get a wheel, about the cutouts, about wheels just dropping people. You know, if you don't push the wheel beyond its limits, it's not likely to happen. I wanted to show you guys here that, you know, it shows you that 17, 18 km right there, and I'm going beyond that. I have not updated this wheel out of the box. Everything works flawlessly. I don't see the point in updating it. This here I had to stop, so you might have saw 30%. Now you see 20% on the screen. But for, you know, the concern of the other guy's post, I had that constant in the back of my head. I might have to brace myself in case this wheel drops me. And I never actually had that happen. There was no tilt backs. There was no alarms. There was no concern. But in the back of my head, it was there. And after this entire ride, I now know that, you know, if I don't update my wheel, do or do not, it's up to you guys. I'm not doing it that the wheel supported me throughout this entire trip. No hesitation, no questions, no concerns. My concern was just solely based off of that post. I ran into that cop. I saw him out there in the parking lot. This is where Target and stuff is down in Lacey. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go talk to this guy. See his opinion on the wheel, you know, if he's got concerns or anything since I'm on the trail and there's no motorized vehicles. And he was actually a very nice shout out to Officer Ryan. If you saw here, it started at 30% and dropped to 20% at 35 miles. This is where I stopped for lunch. And you can see here the range is now gone. Very upset about that. Parked the wheel, left it on, put all my stuff on the table, walked to the bathroom, still had my phone in the pocket, and got disconnected from the wheel. So luckily at the very beginning of the video, I did record both my phone and the display on the unicycle and at the very end. So I was still able to do the math, you know, subtract the two distances and figure out the total range that I got on this wheel. So luckily I didn't have to restart this range test. You can see on the display, you know, it's, it works. It's good. It's in miles per hour, which makes me really happy, which by the way, for guys wondering, the M104 is also in miles per hour. You can see here, not not much distance. I lost connection with the app, I think, a couple of times. I'm down at 20% again here. The amount of distance I got at that 20-30% battery, according to the app, was absolutely baffling. You know, if you hop on a master at 30%, you're going to get like, five miles if you're lucky. You get on S22 at 30%, you're going to get like a mile and a half until extreme tilt back. This wheel, you know, you saw right there I was at 10% and now it's at 20%. It kept fluctuating. So again, I had that concern of how far am I really going to get, but I just kept riding. I rode like nine miles one way and back. So 18 miles, 20 miles round trip. And then I just started going back and forth on the trail. Three miles one way and back, you know, a couple miles the other way and back. So I didn't want to get stranded. Some of this part's really rural, and some of it's kind of out in the farmland. You see, I'm at 10%, and I've gone four miles. So a, a lot of wheels below 30% can't manage a range like this. From 30% down to 0% on the app, which, again, if I stopped, would be 10%. I got like eight miles or something crazy. I don't even know. It was just, it was far. I kept looking at it. I kept having the concern. I rode 0% according to the app for an ungodly amount of time. But, you know, I just kept going. I just wanted to see what the wheel was capable of and how far I could push it. You can see here I'm at 4.2 miles, still riding 10%. Normally a wheel would be dropping like a fly at this point, and it just kept going. I stopped here because the battery bars were zero on the wheel. And look, we're back at 20%. So it went back up because I stopped for a bit. 4.63 miles I rode at that 10, 20% mark, and it just kept going. So I hopped back on, started heading towards the car, thinking, you know, at some point I'm going to start walking this thing or Uber and back. And here it is, I dropped down to 10%. And I noticed the bottom right corner, 
I lost my mileage again. I was like, what the heck? However, what it does is the Pagoda app actually switches from how far you've gone to how far you have left, which is actually kind of cool. I don't know how accurate it is. I wasn't going to follow it all the way to zero, but it is very possible it's pretty accurate because it seemed to be doing fairly well for this trip. You can see it's at what, 33,000. So I think it started at like 36,000, which is six and a half or seven miles for kilometers. You know, some of the stuff in the app is still in metric. It's not an imperial. So you have to take that into consideration. But as far as the display goes and the main gauge for your speed, it you can switch it to imperial, which is very, very nice. I'm really glad the Bagode wheel started doing that. You can see here, I'm down at 34,000, still at 10%, still cruising at 20 miles per hour. It says 10 km, which should be the max speed I'm allowed to go, but it just kept going. The only thing I did notice on this wheel, you know, I do turn off my tilt backs. I do turn off my speed alarms. So... In all worries for people, you know, I should face plant on some of these wheels, but it is yet to happen to me. You can see I'm down to 30, negative 33,000. It's the range I have left, still at 10%. It just kept going. But what I noticed was a couple of times when I had to stop for passings, right there, you could see it. It popped up a little message and said, High current and my wheel beeped a couple of times. No tilt backs. No, you know, it, it didn't feel like it was going to drop me. There was no hesitation. It just was like, hey, dude, your battery's low. You can't accelerate that fast. So being mindful of that, you know, I slowed down for a little bit to see if there was going to be any problems, potentially brace myself for a wheel just is going to give up on me because I've been riding it so long at such a low percent now. And nothing. So I cruised back up to 20 miles per hour and just kept on, kept it on. So I, I had that little warning pop up a couple of times from trying to accelerate too fast. And knowing that and the beeps from the wheel, you know, I just, I'd slowly get up to speed when I had crossings or went around people and I was mindful of it and it just kept going. You know, it's, it's cool to see that negative number there of how much range you have left with your battery percent and how far you've gone or, you know, how much speed you are currently going. It, it This was probably one of the best range tests I've done, honestly. You know, comfort-wise, it was great. The pedals didn't cause much fatigue. I didn't do any pedal adjusting. I didn't stop and stretch my feet. I did stretch my feet while I was riding a couple of times, which even then kind of bowing out your leg and putting your toe down and kind of trying to stretch the bottom of your foot or your calf. The wheel was stable at 20 miles an hour. No problems at all. You know, I haven't done fast speeds on this wheel yet. You know, 30, 35 miles an hour. That'll be coming soon. But as it sits at 20, 25, you know, if I could bow a leg out like that and stretch calf, at 40 PSI, it's a pretty stable, pretty reliable wheel. You can see it just dropped down to 0% there on the display. And now at 33,000, and you'll see it freeze. My phone's not frozen, but the display froze. So once it hit 0%, you know, it actually started having problems with the app connecting to the wheel. You can see here, I'm back at 10%. I had to stop and try to reconnect. We're down at 32,000 now for the kilometers left. My battery display was going between zero and one bar on the display. A quick note on the display, mine is really dim. I do not know if it's defective or not, but when the sun is out, even with my face shield up, you cannot see the display on the T4. Unplugging my wheel a couple of times, the display didn't turn on. I had to turn the wheel on and off a couple of times after charging, and it would come back on. So it may be defective, but I think they may have also reduced the brightness because prior people have complained that it was too bright, even at night. So I looked at my M10 IV last night, and the screen isn't that bright. So it might just be their new screens are a lot dimmer. You can see here, I'm riding 0%. 
again, if you stop, you will go up 10% in the Pagoda app. Sometimes, not every time, but most of the time because there's kind of that buffer there. Yeah, I'm back at 10% here because I slowed down. So even with that, you know, here we are again at 0% and I'm riding. I think this is the point when the app actually... No, maybe not. It froze at one point, and it completely disconnected, and I had to reconnect to it. This might be it here. And I thought, okay, this is the point where my wheel's got so little power left in it, so, you know, the voltage is so low that it's cutting off non-essential stuff like the Bluetooth connectivity, which is possible. But I was able to get it to reconnect to the wheel, which was nice continued riding as well. I did not ride this wheel to it. There you can see, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it popped up again saying high current or whatever that little message said. I continued riding it all the way past the zero, continue riding at the zero, just kept going. And again, the mileage I got from 30% to zero was absolutely bonkers for a wheel. I did not ride it to extreme tilt back. I didn't want to ride it to extreme tilt back. I don't like doing that to the wheels, but I didn't know where that point was. You know, it constantly went to 0% and it'd go back up to 10. You can see we rode from 36,000 down to 31,000 now. So it, it goes pretty far at those lower percentages. I kept going. I finally ended up just turning back, going back to the car because I said, you know what? You know, I, I don't want to get stranded. I don't want to go back and forth all day. So I just rode back to the car at the 0%. Once I got back to the car, let the wheel set for a second, I actually went back up to 10%. So all in all, out of this trip, I got 45.2 miles total. That's when it disconnected. It just, I was like, non-essential systems are going. We're, we're running out of battery here. Juice is gone. But I got it to reconnect. So 45.2 miles total from 100% charge all the way down to, I'm guessing, 10% because it went back up after I stopped to put the wheel back in the car. You know, at at 30%, the S22 was basically dead. Forget it. At, this wheel just kept going. You know, to compare it, extreme tilt back on the S22 was at 50 miles. I was nowhere near that, and I was at 45 miles. So this could very well be a 50-mile wheel, at 20 miles an hour. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, please consider subscribing and sharing. Comment if you have any questions. And again, 45.2 miles is what I got without extreme tilt back. So, you know, have a beautiful day, you beautiful people. This is a beautiful wheel. Go buy one.